Okay, so we've spoken quite a bit about mechanical properties, uh, and I'd like to talk about another property that is quite important, and that is the density um, of, of a material. So, <clears throat> the density, as you probably know, is a measure of the mass per unit volume. Okay, typically it has units of, and this is my notation, just my notation uh, only for um, referring to a dimensional analysis, okay? Dimensions only. So the square brackets there, that's what that means in my notation. Um, the units would typically be grams per uh, cubic centimeter or in proper SI units, kilogram per cubic meter. Those are very common, but mass units per volume. <clears throat> and <clears throat> why is density important? Well, a lot of, um, there's a certainly a, a lot of need for low density materials to um, improve global sustainability, you know, for, um, <clears throat> decrease fuel costs, transporting things around the world. Um, it's, it's often a, an objective of ours to have a lightweight material and often also high strength or high modulus. So actually what I wanted to do is explore a little bit um, this property here, the Young's modulus, but plot it against the density um, and look at some of the different materials in the world and how they can rank up. Um, <clears throat> That's a horrible looking row. Let me just see if I can sort that out. That's a little bit better. There we go. So we want to look at modulus versus density. But the thing is, you know, modulus, if we want to look at all the materials in the world, we're going to go from some foam rubbers and stuff that are really, really soft, like you might make a bed, a bed out of or something. Sorry, a molecule just fell off my shelf. Um, uh, <laughs> um, or you know, all the way up to like a really, really high strength uh, ceramic material, uh, high modulus ceramic material. So we're gonna cover many orders of magnitude. Now when we as scientists, as engineers, want to condense data down onto an axis um, over many orders of magnitude, what we do is we take the log, we, or we can plot it on a logarithmic axis. So we're gonna do that for modulus. And in fact, we're also gonna do that for the, um, for the density. Now let me just put a few values on here. Say we've got one, oh, and units, okay, these are gonna be units of grams per centimeter cubed. So you may know that water, for example, has a density of one gram per cubic centimeter. Um, the modulus, let's put this here, we've got one there. Let's put uh, 10 here, maybe 100 there. So we're going up in orders of magnitude, right? and then a thousand, and these are units, the typical units for Young's modulus, or the gigapascal, okay? So now let, let's see if we can, we can't just, you know, maybe we can, we can position some, some materials somewhere on here, um, and let's, uh, let's start with something close to one gram per cubic centimeter, so something that, you know, is close to the density of water. Well, what floats on water? We, often you think of something that floats, Wood, so it's going to be wood would be a little bit less, so wood should be somewhere along this line here. Um, and what would be the modulus of wood? Well, woods have modulus in the sort of the tens, you know, tens of, of gigapascal range. So, you know, it depends on whether you're going parallel to the grain or perpendicular to the grain. But we could position wood in there somewhere, uh, and. You know, it depends on the species of wood and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what about um, something else like, say, um, say metals, you know? So we'll put um, higher density up there. Well, metals have a density that sort of resides in, in between there. Five to eight, nine grams per cubic meter. Um, cubic centimeter, I mean. And a Young's modulus in the hundreds of gigapascal. So, I mean, don't quote me on exactly where I'm drawing these um, these regions, but typically you'd expect metals to be in here somewhere. Um, ceramics would often have a lower density than a lower density than metals, and even a higher uh, higher Young's modulus. So, you might have some ceramics, say, in this area. 
All right, and again, you know, don't please don't don't quote me on exactly where this is. I'm just trying to give a bit of an intuitive sense. <clears throat> a lot of times we can decrease. What do you you know if you have something that you want to have a high strength or high Young's modulus with a decreased um, density that is quite lightweight? Well, as I think I showed you in a previous video, how about some carbon fiber? Right? That's very uh, can be quite high um, stiffness, high modulus for a very lightweight. Um, so we can have exactly that. We can have sort of a region around in here where you might have some composite materials. Fiberglass, carbon fiber, uh, different, oops, different um, composite materials. Uh, what else might you have? Well, close to one um, gram per cubic centimeter. Again, things that roughly float on water, but lower strength, you might have some of the polymers. Well, you would, in fact. Um, <clears throat> what else? You know, really low modulus, low density, some polymer foams. Again, like the, you know, you might have, uh, if you had a foam mattress, polymer foam, very light, lightweight, um, definitely float on water easily, uh, if it's a closed foam, and closed cell foam. But again, but very, very, you know, I mean, it's easy to deform them, right? A piece of foam, so low, low modulus. And then finally, we could kind of pop the elastomers in here somewhere, roughly. All right, so this is not beautiful, but it's a kind of a nice way of characterizing the world of materials. But what I want to draw your attention to is that this region here remains largely unpopulated. Well, com completely unpopulated, in fact. And it's that region right there that corresponds to high Young's modulus and low density, that's uh, an area of current research. You know, if we can populate that area, we could do some very exciting things. Decreases in fuel efficiency, uh, or increases in efficiency, decreases in consumption, um, lots, of, lots of great things um, there. You know, I mean, even things like sporting goods, we're trying to move more and more towards that high stiffness, low modulus area. Um, High modulus, low low density. Sorry, um, right. So that's um, quick quick look. Next video, we're going to look at um, an example of selecting from these different material classes based on uh, the modulus and the density. Okay, thank you.